Hi guys, this is Justice and uh, this is Cameron or C Butters. And the two of us are talking today about the Surface Laptop Studio 2.0. There's no point oh, and it's maybe not even called the Surface Laptop Studio 2, but that's what we're calling it in this video. It's our speculation. It's, it's our speculation, speculation video. <laughs> it's been released. We have it. There's some absolute uh, amazing and unique qualities to the Surface Laptop Studio that make it my daily driver. I love the different modes. The, the drawing quality on it is fantastic. I like that it can do um, basically everything really well. Not just kind of well, but really well. And so there's, there's a couple caveats to it that I, I would like to see some improvement on. And Kim, I would like if you could start with the different things that you are hoping for in a Surface Laptop Studio 2. Yeah, so I mean, one thing that I think they nailed on this is is the form factor and the platform, and I think that's mm -hmm. that's great. It's it's basically tuned in. In my estimation, it's tuned to one hundred watt performance, and uh, I, I feel like they they went a little light. I mean, it's a quad core processor, uh, thirty fifty Ti, which is which is okay, but <laughs> within that hundred watts with next gen chips in it. That mm. hundred watts is you're you're gonna see a huge bump in performance is is what my estimation is. I think I don't I don't think that they'll change the the platform too much because mm -hmm. I think they really did well with right. the way they set it up to be both you know a laptop and it, and it functions. You just want a laptop, you've got your laptop, and it's yeah. no compromise. It just works. You want your tablet. Like with the Surface Book 3, I actually really love the Surface Book 3, but I do recognize that there was the clunkiness when you tried to pull that top off. But I think, yeah. I don't think in the next version we're going to see much change on the chassis at all because the weight is good. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the, the ability to dissipate 100 watts of performance out of this machine is really good. Um, so I don't, I don't foresee like a lot of uh, changes to the actual hardware, I think it's going to come in terms of improving and refining uh, what's what's in there. Yeah. So, are you saying like a, a a better charging brick? It's like something that that's going to give it uh, more power to use, or or no? I I think I think they've they've nailed that dissipation target that they're they're kind of capped in that 102 watt brick like like that's a right. that's a decent that's a fine amount of performance mm -hmm. when you get i mean if this thing would have launched with like an with a ryzen 5000 in it which is an eight core cpu mm -hmm. um it it actually within the same thermal limit would have had almost double performance uh, wow. on the cpu side mm -hmm. um and so i think next gen when you either get alder lake or a Ryzen. Well, you're not. You're probably not going to see a Ryzen coming to this. I know uh, that'd be nice, but probably not. But yeah. Alder Lake is really good. I mean, it's really good too. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that below 40 watts, the the uh, the Ryzen tends to be a little bit better. Above 40 watts, Alder Lake is better. Mm -hmm. But I think we'll see Alder Lake in this, and that's going to be a huge bump in CPU performance. That's um, the 12th we'll gen. The same power budget. 12th gen. Yeah. 12th gen. Okay. And right now we're sitting at 11. Mm -hmm. So I have I have a um, unique ask from Microsoft. From Microsoft, uh, the the hinge on the display when it tips. Can you show that, Cam? Yeah. So right here, when it when it opens up, when it's floating, you know, you've got this almost uh, magic keyboard type of a thing where you could reach underneath and use the keyboard, uh, but it's not quite is not quite stiff enough for it to float. And so, yes, yes. yeah, if it were, if it were a little less, uh, topsy turvy, <laughs> that's probably not the right word for it, but if it, if it was a little stiffer, then we could use it and adjust it and, and let it just sit there, even if it's just floating and we're not touching it, but that it would stay where we said it would be really nice. So with the GPU inside, we have a 3050 Ti, I know when I was looking at it originally, I was uh, crossing my fingers and really hoping that they would come out with 3060. 
30, 60 would have been enough for me to do pretty much everything I want at the level I wanted. I, I, I absolutely agree on that. That was one of my, my biggest things with it was the 3050 TI in terms of just pure rasterizing performance. It's actually a little less than the 1660 TI and the surface book three, other than, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And they're pretty neck and neck. They're very close. And some things, the 3050 Ti is better, the 1660 Ti is better than others. But it yeah. really was not a GPU bump from the Surface Book 3, which I was disappointed. I agree. I, agree. I think I did a video on that that, <laughs> that topic. I'm like, it's I think I did too. <laughs> not the most powerful Surface. I know they're saying it's the most powerful uh, Surface device. And, and I, I'm like, uh, not really. In some ways, it's not. So yeah. 3060, but 3060 requires more power, doesn't it? It, it does and it doesn't. Um, I mean, they can tune it whatever you want, but what you find is I think it comes down to cost because the 3060 <clears throat> has more uh, compute units in it. Mm -hmm. um, and what you, if you have more compute units, you can run more of them at a lower clock speed and get the same level of performance within the same power budget. So, I mean, that up to a point, um, and right. you kind of get really technical when you're talking about that, but they, they could have put a 36, a 50 watt 3060 in this machine, um, and it would have had better performance than the 3050 Ti, definitely. Yeah. Uh, what would be your guess on how much more performance it'd have? Um, oh, that's hard to say, but I mean, at <laughs> least, at least 15, 20%, I would say if it was running at the same budget. Okay. Same budget. And now, uh, thirty sixty versus thirty fifty Ti. When we're talking about um, like the full uh, power version, not a uh, fifty watt version, thirty sixty is almost twice as powerful as the thirty fifty Ti. Um, yeah, yeah. Most machines that that have a thirty sixty are running at at least sixty watts up to eighty, and and sometimes well beyond that in mm -hmm. some of the laptops. Yeah. Um, so within that, I, I understand why they went 3050, but I right. think next yeah. gen, I mean, we don't even have to really worry because we're not going to see a 3060 in it. What we are going to see is, and who knows how they'll release these models, but the, the 4,000 series, gra series graphics that are coming out, um, yeah. even the 4050 Ti, if, if they just keep it, we went from 3050 Ti right. to 4050 Ti, yeah. we're going to see we're going to see some really good performance bump. Right. Yeah. And I would be, I think that, that the 4050 TI and the 3060 are, are probably going to be pretty similar, but you know, better designed and more intelligent and yeah. yeah. Smaller process node, more power efficient. Mm -hmm. I think, I think a 50 watt GPU in next gen is going to, you know, have the, you know, 15, 20% performance bump. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, with with this form factor and keeping this in a place where we can actually keep the form factor. I'm there are other. I my complaint was there are other laptops that are smaller than the Laptop Studio that have you know quite a bit more powerful processor or GPUs in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the sad thing, here's the sad thing. This this X13 device has the exact same GPU. Mm. And it's actually a 35 watt GPU. And the Surface Laptop Studio has the 50 watt version of it, mm -hmm. other than that same GPU. Because they chose 11th gen quad core, um, the performance you get on this that only has 35 watts, but does have the Ryzen 8 core, more power efficient, higher clock speed at less watts, mm -hmm. uh, I find performance drastically outperforms Surface Laptop Studio, even though it's a 35 watt GPU on, and it's a full pound, almost a full pound less. Yeah. So there's tons of room for improvement on the Studio 2. Yeah, um, now I would, I would personally, because I use mine as a tablet frequently, I would, I would love, not smaller, lighter. But is yeah. that going to happen? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I don't like, think so either. I think yeah. I, I really think I could definitely see them adjusting that hinge to be rigid and floating. That would be really cool. Yeah, that would be think, nice. I think they. I think that form factor. They're not, especially maybe in you know third or fourth gen, they may adjust it a little bit. Right. But I yeah. think that's nailed in at least for the next version. 
yeah, pen tech, I don't see any changes there. They did a great job improving it. It's uh, best in class, uh, as far as I'm concerned, huge improvements. Um, screen brightness, which would be something I would love to see, like if they did that, uh, the same screen as the X16, which is, is an OLED, right? It's a mini LED. The mini LED. All right, mini LED. So it has a peak brightness of uh, 1100, and then the standard brightness is right around 550. That's right. And uh, it's, I think it's very possible that Microsoft ends up doing something like this because, I mean, some of their biggest competitors, like the MacBooks, mm -hmm. they have many LED screens, like really nice ones. Um, yeah. And that extra brightness is super useful, especially as a tablet, as you can speak to for sure. Yeah, the the X sixteen has um what one hundred and sixty five hertz refresh. Uh, what, or, sorry, which device? The X sixteen. Am I remembering yeah, correctly? 165. Yeah, one sixty five. One sixty five. I my understanding, so. I don't see Microsoft bumping the the one hundred and twenty hertz up to one hundred and sixty five. I don't see that happening. Uh, I don't. I and I don't think next gen is going to be. Uh, the, uh, was it micro LED? What did you call it? Mini LED. Mini, mini LED and micro would be so much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the mini LED screen, I would love to see that on the next one, but, um, I'm not sure that that would make too much of a difference if it's peak brightness versus the standard brightness. Yeah. And that's the thing is when they talk about peak brightness, that's like, are you running an HDR game mm -hmm. or, you know, if you're, if you have HDR enabled, uh, that's when you're seeing that peak 1100 brightness and it's only smaller sections of the screen at once. Right. Um, but in general, if it can hit a peak 1100, you know, the screen in general can be very bright in normal usage. Yeah. Do you know what the peak brightness is on Surface Laptop Studio right now? Yeah. Surface Laptop Studio is 500. And the right, Surface Pro 8 is the same as the Surface Pro X, which was, I think, like 468, somewhere right around there. It's lower by about 40 or so than the Laptop Studio. So one of the reasons I got the Laptop Studio is not a huge difference, but um, I do try and use my, my computers outdoors, and so it makes a difference to me. Yeah, and another thing uh, while we're speaking about the screen that it would be something that would be a welcome addition is um, like the screen response time uh, could be improved uh, pretty dramatically. And that would happen at the same time if they switch to a new display. I think any newer display, if they did go mm -hmm. uh, mini LED, you would see that happen just organically. But um, there can be some ghosting on the laptop studio. The response time is not is not gaming laptop class, right. um, which Frankly, neither is the X13, which is technically a gaming laptop. It's screen right. response time isn't the best either. Do you know what that? Would that... Be an area that would be nice to improve. The the X16 I think was touting three milliseconds. Yeah, it should be really nice. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any idea what the uh, the X13 or the Studio is? I think roughly? there's something uh, they're between twenty five and thirty five milliseconds. Okay, so significant. Time. And, and the X16 advertised at three, it's probably something like seven or eight when yeah. it's actually tested, <laughs> yeah. I guess. So. Yeah. yeah. But it is, a, it is quite a bit yeah. drastic. Difference, so. Battery life, 16 hours, real world use, two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one of the biggest complaints I had was the removal of the micro SD card slot in between the Pro 7 Plus and the Pro 8 and Laptop Studio. I was really frustrated because I had a a lot of cards, the micro SD cards that were of significant size, and I used it and you could game off of a micro SD card. I ended up getting the uh, smaller Surface Laptop Studio, smaller hard drive, and then returning it and I have the two terabyte model now, which was ridiculously expensive, 100% worth it, but it would be really nice for, for everyone to have the option of using a micro SD card slot. And you were just telling me about uh, what Apple did. Yeah, I think uh, I think they added some of the SD cards back onto some of their Pro models, uh, where before they went dongle life and you know took everything off. I think they've added some right. of that back in. Yeah, so there is there Which is. Be nice. you're, you're you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was I mean, 
I didn't even realize that on the pro eight until I went to actually use it. And then I was like, well, wait, what? Like it's, it's not there, you know? Like, yeah, it was hidden out of the way and it was great. And so it'd be really nice to see SD is so small. Anyways, the only, it it's like, the only reason they choose not to do this is cost savings. And yeah, yeah, they're with the uh, difference in price. I knew you're going to save like three or $400. At least I mean, it was great. They gave us the ability to upgrade the SSD on the Pro mm -hmm. 8. I've done a few videos on on that as well. And I actually updated a 512 Studio to a two terabyte by opening that up as well. So, yeah. So uh, do you have a video on that or no? I don't think <laughs> I did a video on that. So, it, several people did some pretty good ones. So I, I thought, just linked uh, to it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, well, but definitely, I have one of the most popular videos on how to do it on your Pro 8. So, okay, so we'll link to that as well. All right, if you have a feature that we didn't talk about that you wish was in the, uh, the next version of the Laptop Studio, put that in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe, and check out Cam's channel. He's got a lot of great content for Surface users. All right, thank you, Cam, for being on the show with me today. Thanks, Justice, for having me. All right, we'll see you guys. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next video.